All right, welcome back, guys. We are now uh, going to finish up chap lesson one, chapter one, uh, and go into lesson two today. We left off yesterday talking about Bernoulli's principle, old man Bernoulli. Bottom line, uh, what's the takeaway memory device about Bernoulli? Why do we fly, guys? Why do we fly? Yes, sir. Because of the wind, the fast air, and the slow air equals less wait. Fast air equals less pressure, and slow air equals more pressure. Give me a high five. Fast air gives low pressure. Slow air gives much pressure. Yes, sir. So that is the miracle of flight that we do not realize, and, uh, and again, many people before lost their lives flapping their wings like birds. When it's really not flapping that makes you fly, it is really the uh, really the pressure underneath the wing or the low pressure on top of the wing sucking you up. Okay, looking at the, uh, the actual exam example here with Bernoulli's principle, and again, I remind you, Bernoulli lived in basically the mid 1700s, 250 years before the Wright brothers use this principle to fly. Which makes you wonder, guys, what other kind of uh, sciences, what other kind of inventions are out there that we know the basics of right now, but we haven't discovered the actual results of them. For instance, you guys next year, if you'll stay with me, you'll take space and astronomy. We'll talk about how vast the universe is. Has anybody ever heard of the North Star? Yes, okay, the North Star, I mean, it's not the hard thing to find. Last night at 2 a.m. was uh, the, the Perseids meteor shower. My, my son and I watched the meteor showers last night. But the North Star is about 425 light years away. So that means the light you see of the North Star started 425 years ago. And so you see all the science fiction stuff that talks about, you know, let's go visit aliens and let's go visit other star systems. We're not anywhere near that. I mean, we, we can't do it. We can, we're, 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 the fastest we ever fly is like 25,000 miles an hour. Speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. And the light we see up there from the North Star is 425 years old at 125,000 miles per second. So we're not there. But for 250 years, Bernoulli had this, these basic facts, and we didn't think about flying, did we? Until one set of brothers figured it out. Right. So how many other, how many other impossible things that we cannot do right now have not been discovered? We could be just like in the 1860s. Oh, we'll never fly. Man was not meant to fly, right? Ooh. But they did it. Yes, sir. Uh, another one was swimming below a thousand feet without a submarine. Can we do that? You mean we can do that right now? No. Okay, yeah, okay, we can't do that right now. Right, that would be a human body. But again, it's no more different than, uh, than again, in the 1940s, World War II. Can you imagine World War II telling somebody, hey, you know, in 20 years we'll be walking on the moon. 25 years. That's kind of crazy. 25 years since Pearl Harbor, they were walking on the moon. So what are we going to do in 25 years? We cannot imagine right now. Walk sir. Um, people have swung below a thousand feet without a submarine. Good. Okay. So, relative wind. This is a hard concept to understand. Relative wind. On bottom of page 13. Somebody read me what relative wind is. Hmm. Yes, sir. Cadet Moosnick. Okay, so again, relative wind is not how the plane is flying. Relative to wind, relative wind. If you look at the look at the uh, on the top of page fourteen, and I guess I'll go like this. The top of page fourteen here. Did it show up? There it is. Relative wind is actually the angle 
between the cord line, remember the cord goes from the front to the end of the airfoil, the relative wind is how the wind is hitting the airfoil. So it's kind of complicated. Okay? If a plane is falling down straight like this, where is the relative wind? It's straight up. Okay? If the plane is flying, the relative wind is right here. And the difference between the relative wind and the cord is called what? Angle of attack. That's on page 15. These are basic aerodynamic terms you need to know because this all determines whether or not the plane's flying. And if the angle of attack is too much, the plane doesn't fly. If the angle of attack is too much, there is no low pressure on top, there is no high pressure on bottom, it falls out of the sky. Which just happened. <laughs> Which just happened in San Francisco. You remember the big crash here, what, a month ago? When a Korean, Chinese, what was it? Japanese. Japanese plane came and land, and uh, it got too slow and final. And, I, and I'm not an expert. Uh, I'm an expert in Air Force crashes, but not civilian crashes. But my feeling is the pilots just screwed up. They got too slow. And look at the picture here. The angle of attack got too high. And when you get too high, the airfoils don't work. There is no low pressure on top and you stall and fall out of the sky. Look on the bottom of page 15 here. I've got the picture on the display. When you stall, look at the flow of the air across your airfoil. Guys, this is why you fly. When you're an old man like me and your kid goes, gee, Dad, how come you fly? Well, the answer is Bernoulli, low pressure, high pressure, but then specifically, more aerodynamically, that you guys can understand as high school or college kids, is the exact reason you fly is because the angle of attack allows you to have the low pressure and high pressure. Look at these pictures where my pencil is here. If you have too much of an angle of attack, you have turbulent air above the, the actual airfoil. When you have turbulent air, you don't have the low pressure. It stalls. It stalls. The next time, here's, a, here's what I do with my kids. When you're driving out, when you're driving today, when you're driving your car down the road, stick your hand out the window. If you stick your hand like this, stick your hand like this, it's gonna blow apart, blow, gone, right? That is total drag. Okay, we'll get to drag. But if you curve your hand, it becomes a wing. airfoil. Airfoil, yes, a wing. It does. It becomes an airfoil, a wing. And you can practice this angle of attack, sticking your hand out the window. I'll have all these kids. All my RTC kids were singling left and singling right. All right, so you're out there playing, and you're blowing like this, it blows away. But if you go like this, all of a sudden you'll see your hand pop up. Why is your hand popping up? Because of the low pressure on top. Sure. Ding, 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 ding. Bernoulli's equation. And then, oh, by the way, if you go like this, it'll, it'll blow away. Your hand is stalling. It's just as simple as that. You can always stick your hand out the window. Here's the question. When you stick your hand out the window, where is the relative wind? I mean, right, right straight at it, right? But again, if you're flying, just because you're climbing, here's another thing that confused me. When you're climbing, let's say you're a fighter, one of these fighters, and you're climbing like this, and you have your wings on the plane, where is the relative wind? It's really right here in the nose. It's not necessarily right here. Because you're climbing up through the wind with a lot of thrust. Okay? But you get to a point where the relative wind is too much and you stall. You see down here on the bottom of the uh, where my pencil is, that's called laminar flow. Laminar means smooth. That is what you want. That is what the big plane in San Francisco did not have. <laughs> they got too slow and too low, and they increased their angle of attack, and they flat just stalled and it went bam on the runway. Or actually bam before the runway, right? <laughs> and they bounced a few times. And that is the difference. So the question is, why do you fly? Because of Bernoulli's equation. Why do you not fly? Because you stall and fall. Okay? What about propeller? Did we talk about we did say well, propeller is what? An airfoil. It is. Can it stall? Yes. 
You better believe in install. What about a helicopter? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. What makes a wop 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 work? <laughs> wop 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 is a airfoil on top of a big machine pulling it up. Right? It is a propeller on the top of your machine pulling it up. <laughs> wop 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 wop. By the way, a helicopter is pulling it up, but if you didn't have anything to stabilize it, if this is pulling it up, what would happen? What Newton's law? Opposite reaction. So if this one's spinning this way, what would happen to the main body? <laughs> that that probably happened. Okay, these guys figured this out. So what do we do to stabilize a helicopter? Put a sideways propeller. We put a sideways propeller in the back, and it blows, and it keeps, and it's wanting to go round and round. Helicopters are not meant to fly. I don't believe in helicopters. Helicopters. <laughs> helicopters are very fun. They're very fun, and they're very uh, very important strategically. And actually, I have a treat for this class uh, next Monday. Next Monday, we actually have a guest lecturer who is a helicopter pilot from Vietnam, who lived in Vietnam, and coming to actually talk to your uh, class. So you can ask him all the uh, wop wop stories about Vietnam and, uh, and why this works. So Sir, next Monday, we'll have a hometown hero on that. Why don't you believe in helicopters? Uh, I, I like going fast. I, don't, I like going fast and shooting missiles 40 miles away. I don't like uh, going slow and have people shoot their BB gun at me and bring me down. Which, uh, <laughs> which definitely can happen in a wop wop. Yes, exactly. Somebody can shoot you down with a BB gun. Okay. It's funny. What did you do? Kurt, we should show you the WAP video. WAP, WAP, WAP. I bet you there's some, uh, I bet you there's some on there. It's a dance. Do it, Christians. Okay. Finalize this chapter. The other thing, we talked about the angle of attack, and if you increase the angle of attack, in general, the lift will increase, just like the picture shows here. Your pitch is how an aircraft goes up. By the way, there are three different types of axes on an aircraft. And you know what? I need to get a I need to get a, bring an aircraft in here. A pitch is when it pitches up and down. That means going up and going down. If you roll left and right, that's roll. And what's the third one? Y'all. 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 Is y'all. Y a w. It is pointing left w. and right. So pitch is up and down, roll is left and right, and then pointing is yaw. So as you look from this picture, if you increase your pitch, you generally increase the lift until, they say here, 15 degrees. That is a generic statement for a generic airfoil, and you go to Amber Riddle, they'll tell you that's wrong. It depends on the airfoil. It depends on how your hand is shaped sticking out of the car <laughs> on when, it's, when it stalls. But they're saying about 15 degrees is when the angle of attack stalls the aircraft. Okay? All right. In, uh, in summary, we went over the theory of flight. We talked about some of the terminology you guys need to know. Uh, we talked about who old man Bernoulli is and old man Newton and how they related to aviation. Uh, you understand now what relative wind is? It's not when it's where you're going. Relative wind is how it's hitting the airfoil. The angle of attack is the angle between the cord and the relative wind. And the angle of attack is what determines whether or not the plane flies or not. All right, everybody, please, let's go to lesson two. Lesson two is called the physics of flight. We're going to go over some of the uh, details about how lift is, is generated, how weight affects flight, uh, what is drag, just like uh, sticking your hand out the window of your car, how does that affect your hand. And we talk about the four forces of flight that I've already introduced those to you.
say that five times fast. How fast? That's fine. Okay. Now we know why we fly. We fly because of Bernoulli. We, know, we fly because of high pressure, low pressure. How do we fly is determined by the forces of flight. You cannot finish my course without knowing that picture there. It's on the top left of page 20, right there displayed behind me. Those are the four forces acting on any aerospace vehicle, anything including rockets, including helicopters, including gliders, including a paper airplanes we're going to have you guys make. Did I tell you you're going to have a paper airplane contest? No. Oh yeah, we'll do that. When we have our big test, we'll have a paper airplane contest. All right, so big picture, four different things. What makes us go up? What sucks us up? What is that force called? Yes, sir. Lift, sir. Lift, exactly. Right there with the the uh, arrow going up, and by the way, the arrow goes up out of an aircraft at the center of lift of the aircraft, which you take the entire aircraft, and like you can balance it on one, one point, that is where the lift is generated and concentrated for the entire aircraft. Opposite of lift is... Drag. Weight, sir. Weight. Weight. A big fat belly is my weight, right? I mean, so I got lift going up and weight going down. We talked about this yesterday. When you're flying a fighter and you want to accelerate straight up, I used to do air shows. I'd take off right at the end of the runway. I'd put it on the tail and go straight up. And you could accelerate, so you have to have more lift than drag. Excuse me, lift than weight. I mean, you have to be able to accelerate straight up. And oh, by the way, if you're going absolutely straight up, that acceleration is deal with thrust. That makes you go forward. Okay? So opposite of lift is weight. weight opposite weight. of thrust is drag. drag. So let's go back to our car statement. I'm sticking my hand out the window. I put my hand like this, and all of a sudden it pounds back. What is that? Drag. drag. If I put my hand like this, what is the thrust of my hand? Ding, 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 ding. I'm in a car, stick my hand out. What is the thrust of my airfoil? Wait. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, air the car, right? The thrust of your, car, of your hand is the car engine, how fast you're going. So you have thrust, you have drag, and then you curl it and make it into an airfoil. All of a sudden it pops up. That is lift. What is the weight? What is the weight? It's the weight of your hand, right? I mean, you do like that. Yeah, exactly. These are the four forces of flight. This is how it's generated. <coughs> Controlling lift. We talked about it. We have to increase the angle of attack. Cadet Moore, what's the angle of attack? There is something called the book. Okay. <laughs> What is the angle of attack? We need to know this. We just went over this on page 15. Do you want me to the definition of it? Sure. What's the angle of attack? Um, the angle between the direction of the relative wind and the cord line of the airfoil. It's the cord and the wind, right? It's the angle. So look at the picture here on the uh, display. Uh, that is an F-18, I'm pretty sure. Single seat. No, two seat. Um, yeah, it's F-18. It's a piece of junk, okay? <laughs> Just kidding. It's a, it's a Navy plane. It's a great Navy plane. It's not as good as Air Force planes. Ha ha. All right, but the bottom line is look at the angle of attack of that plane accelerating. The angle of attack must, and the velocity, how fast it's going with the thrust, must be balanced to keep your flight level. Any kind of air condition, when I'm up there flying through nice, beautiful Arizona air, and I hit clouds, does that affect my flight? It gets your, the, the window wet. We're gonna, we're gonna get the window wet. <laughs> it sure does. And uh, we will talk about this in our weather section, but when you're looking up at clouds, you go, oh, how beautiful and puffy. They look so gorgeous at sunset. What are clouds? Water. 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 It's moisture you can see in the air, okay? But if you have moisture here, water, and you have clear air over here, What's the difference then besides the moisture? Why is there not moisture? A over cloud. There? But, but why? 
It is all in a cloud. It's all condensed together. Okay, but what is there moisture over here? There is, but it's not condensed like. Over okay, here. so then when it's condensed, hmm. does it have more or less energy when it's condensed when it's not? More energy. More energy when it's condensed. And so when you see clouds, I think of energy. When you see clouds, it is an exchange of energy in the weather system. And when you see clouds that all of a sudden get together and start heating up and start expanding, and then all of a sudden you have kaboom, you have rain systems, it's energy exchange. So I'm flying in a plane, and I fly in a whole bunch of energy exchange. Is that going to affect me a bit? Yes. yes. I mean a lot. Right? It won't necessarily kill you, but it will definitely get your attention if you fly in a big thunderstorm. You don't ever want to fly in a thunderstorm. That's dangerous. But I fly in the clouds all the time, and yes, it bounces you around and makes you slower, makes you faster, get your windscreen wet. How do you get that dry? How do you have, what is the windscreen wiper? How does, the, how does the windscreen wiper work at 400 miles an hour? Or do, do you have one on the jet? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Has anybody ever driven a car at, well, you see my Miata, at 20 it. miles an hour, my Miata, when I drive at 20 miles an hour, it rains on top of my head, okay? But if I get up to 50 or 60 in the Miata, and I have a little small windscreen, do I get wet? No. No, no it hits either. the windscreen, zinc, gone. Okay, no big deal. Actually, I only get wet when I turn on my wind, windshield wiper, because that pulls up the water, and it streams over and hits me in my face. So in a plane, no. The big planes that go slow have windscreen, windshield wipers. The fighters, this guy right here, you're going so fast, it's, it's non-existent. It hits it, it comes off, and yes, it hurts your, you know, you can't see as well as a clear day. But of course, this guy's got other sensors. you got radars, you got other, uh, other sensors that can tell where people are that the big planes don't. The big planes have windshield wipers, they want to be able to see the runway and land, right? And it's kind of important to be able to see it land. So yes, uh, how does our weight affect our flight? Hmm, hmm. Well, this is also, we will go through this in April, May. There have been some very spectacular crashes involving weight. If I have more weight, do I need more thrusties? Yes. Good. If I have more weight, do I need more lifties? Yes, sir. Great. This is how you, you know, imagine a plane and you got lifties, you got thrusties, and the more you increase the angle of attack, the more you increase the angle of attack, what happened to the lifties? It's good to a certain point, and then the lifties who are hanging onto your wings, they fall off. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So the lifties fall off, and then the plane does what? Dies. Stalls. Ding, 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 ding. The weight, which is opposite of the lift, wins. So here it is, the weight affects your flight hugely. And I'll tell you what, it's interesting, you guys are not old enough to know this, when I was a kid, they never cared about what you carried on the plane. Really? And they said, you can take three or four bags, no big deal, here, take it, go on. And now, if you guys have flown, they actually stick that bag on the machine and they wait. And they look at you and go, oh, your average human being is 150. But if you're if, you're, if your luggage is over 50 pounds now, you've got to pay more. And I got, of course, with computers, they can push a button and total up everybody's luggage. Imagine doing this paper and pencil with no computers. They didn't care how much your luggage weighed. They were going with estimates, and they were overestimating, so it was very safe. They didn't have any planes. But look at this design. You have fuel up in the front, where all the engines are. You have the payload, which is where all your baggage is in the back. Do you think this has to be balanced? Yeah. There is something called the center of gravity or the center of weight for every plane. And it cannot be out of balance. Especially, not necessarily in cargo, uh, uh, human planes. I mean, these carry airliners. But I'm talking about cargo planes. Do I have a picture of a cargo plane? Yeah, up there on the top, for the Berlin airlift, that's a C-47, I believe. The Berlin airlift. You're putting a bunch of, 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 of food or luggage or baggage or heck, now these planes carry tanks, right? If you put a tank in a plane and everything's balanced fantastic and you take off and old uh, Cadet Johnson was eating lunch that day and didn't tie the tank down that well 
and the tank moves 10 feet. And how much does the tank weigh? 20 tons? Something ridiculous? I don't know. Do you think it's going to affect the plane when the, when the tank moves 10 feet? Yes. Yes. The center of gravity, the center of weight is adjusted. And oh, by the way, here I'm the pilot. Mm, no problem. I'm gonna, then you're in your big airline plane. You got your two hands in on the yoke, and you pull back, rotate, and the plane rotates. Everything's perfect. But when you rotate, what happens in a plane to all your unsecured items? They fall down. They go to the back. And so I'm taking take it off, and all of a sudden, the more I rotate back, all of a sudden, his tank, which he didn't, he didn't attach, starts to roll to the back. Destroys. When you roll the back and you rotate, and it's starting to go to the back, your center of weight gets out of balance, and it starts to go back. And so your pilot goes, holy cow, then what do you start doing? Die. You start pushing forward, but at that point, you have exceeded your critical angle of attack for your thrust, and you crash and burn at the other runway. And this has happened quite a few times. Because the angel. A very famous case. <laughs> a very famous case. Guys was in uh, Charlotte with U.S. Air flight. Unsecured luggage. The uh, pilot rotated. You know, you rotate to a particular angle to take off like six degrees, I think seven degrees. You rotate, then all of a sudden the plane kept going back because all the luggage fly back. And the pilot could not control because at a certain point the plane is unflyable. You don't have the lifties. You don't have the weight correctly positioned. You don't have the thrusties. Yes, sir, Cadet Ben Uh, Isn't it true that 10 seconds after takeoff is the most dangerous and 10 seconds before landing are the most dangerous points? I haven't heard about 10 seconds. I know that in general, aviation-wise, I mean, again, I'm an Air Force investigator, uh, the almost crashes are 10 minutes prior to the runway and 10 minutes after the runway. Why would that be? Because you're touching the ground. Plane is slow and low, and where are most of the planes in the world? It's high and oh, mighty. Slow and round runways. Oh. Right here, all these planes are slow and low coming around the runways. They're tighter and closer than they've ever been before, and so naturally you'd have congestion. But it doesn't. And if the plane has enough thrusties, enough lifties, it works. It is no big deal. What is the safest way in the world to travel? In the air. I mean, in the air, walking from here to. Taco Bell? Y'all ever do that? Yeah. So like Taco Bell is incredibly more dangerous than flying from here to New York City. <laughs> I, we'll, we'll get to the safety portion of the, the, of the uh, class, but I'm just telling you, you realize, you realize that driving in your car to the church on Sunday morning is about 100? I looked it up last class. 150 times more dangerous than flying from here to Paris. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. Okay. All righty. So here we go, guys. When we're flying. When we're flying, what are we burning? What keeps the thrusties going? Fuel. And when the fuel goes out the rear end, what happens to our weighty? It goes down. The weighty goes down. And when the weighty goes down, what happens to our center of gravity? It changes. It changes. So actually, you have to adjust this a lot. One of the most famous cases was um, Charles Lindbergh. You may have heard of him? Yes, sir. What did he do? He flew the first solo flight across the Atlantic. I thought he played for the Arizona Cardinals. So you're wrong. He didn't play for the Arizona Cardinals. I'm sorry, my bad. No, he did. He was the first solo flight from New York to Paris. Oh, yeah, and he did it with the enclosed jet where it was like no. He way. could not see out in front because there's so many fuel tanks. Yes. So the majority of his flight was adjusting fuel from tank to tank. How many computers did he have? None. None. He had a compass and a watch, <laughs> and he flew from New York to Paris. That's pretty amazing. And oh, by the way, the compass stopped working out of Atlantic, which there are anomalies that, that they don't work. Ask me about my story in the Bahamas someday. But when you when you don't have a compass, how do you navigate? You don't. You look at the stars. We talked about the North Star, Polaris. So 
Charles Lindbergh had to look out the window, his side window, and look at the North Star. And if you want to go east, where, where would the North Star be? To the east. North. On your left shoulder, right? If you're looking over the North Star, you're heading east. That's how he got there, but his main concern for the flight was adjusting the weight so he could be properly balanced and getting all the fuel. I don't know, 17 tanks, 12 tanks? Eight. A lot of tanks, a lot of draining. That was a huge part of him to make it happen. Okay, thrusties. Gee, what kind of plane is that real weird out there we a just see? A Harrier jump jet. A Harrier jump jet. Yes, and I don't know if that one is taken.